Hello everyone, welcome to the first video in the series of challenge question walkthroughs for Edexcel's AS Core Pure Maths and this is for chapter one. Our first question comes from exercise 1c and part a asks us to expand a plus bi squared. So using the formula for a plus b squared we have first a squared and then 2 times a times bi and then bi all squared. And so we have a squared plus 2abi and then i squared is equal to minus 1 so this is just minus b squared. So collecting the real and imaginary terms we have a squared minus b squared and then plus 2abi. And part B says, hence or otherwise, find the square root of 40 minus 42i, given your answer in the form a minus bi, where a and b are positive integers. So, if we call the complex number w, the square root of 40 minus 42i, then we have that w squared is equal to 40 minus 42i. And if we say w is a plus bi, then we know if we square w, then we'll get a number of the form a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. And we can equate the coefficients. So here we have 40 is equal to a squared minus b squared. And then for the coefficient of i, we have minus 42 is equal to 2ab. So we can write two simultaneous equations in terms of a and b. So we'll have a squared minus b squared is equal to 40. And also 2ab is equal to minus 42, which we can simplify to ab is equal to minus 21. And if we divide both sides by b, then we can get a is equal to minus 21 over b. And we can substitute that back into the first equation. So we have a squared, which is minus 21 over b squared, which gives us 441 over b squared. Minus b squared is equal to 40. Now, if we multiply all the terms by b squared to get rid of the fraction here, we have 441 minus b to the power of 4 is equal to 40b squared. And taking all terms to one side, we get b to the power of 4 plus 40b squared minus 441 is equal to 0. And here, if you solve this um, hidden quadratic, we get that b squared is either equal to 9 or b squared is equal to minus 49. And as b is a positive integer, so real, we can eliminate this possibility. So we have that b must equal 3 or minus 3. But we can see that we need our answer in the form a minus bi, where b is positive. So we must choose b equals minus 3 as our answer. And summing that back into a equals minus 21 over b, we have that a is equal to minus 21 over minus 3 which is just 7. So our answer in the form a minus bi is equal to 7 minus 3i. And our next question is from exercise 1f. Three of the roots of the equation z to the power of 5 plus bz to the power of 4 plus cz cubed plus dz squared plus ez plus f is equal to 0 where b, c, d, e, and f are real numbers, are minus 2, 2i, and 1 plus i. And we're asked to find the values of the coefficients b, c, d, e, and f. So first of all, if we know that 2i and 1 plus i are roots of the equation, then we know that their complex conjugates are also roots. So we have that two more roots of the equation are minus 2i and 1 minus i. And that gives us all five roots to the equation. Therefore, we can write the quintic equation as a product of five factors in the form z minus alpha times z minus beta times z minus gamma and so on, where alpha, beta, gamma and so on are the roots of the polynomial. So we can write the quintic in the form z plus 2 times z minus 2i times z plus 2i times z minus 1 plus i times z minus 1 minus i. 
and we can be strategic about how we expand these brackets. If we look here for these two, we have a difference of two squares. So we have z plus two times z squared minus two i all squared. So that's z squared plus four. And if we look at the next two brackets, we should see some nice cancellations. So we have z squared, then minus one plus i z, minus one minus i z, and then we have plus one plus i, one minus i on the end. Now, if we expand these first two brackets, we have z cubed plus two z squared plus four z plus eight. And for the last bracket, if we expand the brackets inside this bracket first, so we have minus z minus i z here, and then here we have minus z plus i z. The i z will cancel here. And then at the end, we have a difference of two squares. So this will be one squared minus i squared, which is just equal to one plus one, which gives us two. So for the second bracket, we're gonna have z squared minus two z plus two. So our final step is to expand these two brackets, doing so very carefully. First, multiplying everything in the second bracket by the z cubed, we have z to the power of five minus two z to the power of four, plus 2z cubed, then multiplying everything by 2z squared, we have plus 2z to the power of 4, minus 4z cubed, plus 4z squared, then by 4z, we have plus 4z cubed, minus 8z squared, and plus 8z, and finally by the 8, we have plus 8z squared, minus 16z, plus 16. And collecting like terms, we have z to the power of 5, the 2z to the power of 4 is cancel. And then for the z cubes, the 4z cubes will cancel. So we're left with 2z cubed. Then the 8z squared will cancel here. So we're left with 4z squared. And then finally on the end, minus 8z plus 16. And so the values of b, c, d, e, and f are 0, 2, 4, minus 8, and 16 as required. And our last question from mixed exercise one, part A asks us to explain why a cubic equation with real coefficients cannot have a repeated non-real root. So, if we suppose that a cubic equation can have a repeated non-real root, then we know that the complex conjugate of this non-real root also has to be a repeated non-real root. So we have found four roots of a cubic, and this is a contradiction. As we know that all cubics have exactly three roots in total. Therefore, a cubic equation with real coefficients cannot have a repeated non-real root. And for part B, by means of an example, show that a quartic equation with real coefficients can have a repeated non-real root. So for example, let's say we have a quartic with a repeated non-real root of, let's say, i. Then we know that minus i, this complex conjugate, is also a repeated root. And so we can write this quartic in the form z plus i squared times z minus i squared. And we can do this very quickly and efficiently if we realise, well, this is the same as z plus i times z minus i, all squared. And this inside here is just a difference of two squares. So we have z squared minus i squared, which is just plus one, all squared. And this gives us z to the power of four plus two z squared plus one. And this will be a example of a quartic with a repeated nominal root as required. And that is the end of the challenge question walkthrough for Edexcel's Core Pure AS chapter one. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you for the next one.